Mr. Wu. This time, it's a showdown. Fifteen days ago, an 18-year-old girl in China took to social media and declared war on Chris Wu, a pop singer and a top celebrity in mainland China. Little did she expect that she would win in the end. In a statement released late on July 31, Beijing police said that they had arrested a 30-year-old Canadian man named Wu on suspicion of rape. Wu was being investigated for an online allegation that he lured young girls into having sex with him. China's official media outlet, People's Daily, quickly shared the post and identified Wu as Chris Wu, the superstar in China's entertainment industry. The next day, Wu's online accounts were banned across all platforms in China. His music was taken offline, the homepage of his movies and TV shows disappeared, and Wu's name was changed to code 1337000. Wu's fan club accounts were also suspended. Such an intense ban on an entertainment celebrity is rather rare in China. Wu was born in Guangzhou, China, and moved to Vancouver with his mother at the age of 10. At the age of 18, he auditioned in Vancouver for SM Entertainment, one of the biggest entertainment companies in Korea. He later rose to fame in the K-pop group EXO. He has appeared in several NBA All-Star Celebrity Games, and in 2018, he became teammates with Canadian celebrity Justin Bieber. The New York Times quoted a woman in New York saying that Wu's detention was a significant step forward for China's Me Too movement. It's perhaps too simplistic of an interpretation. The 18-year-old girl is a student of the College of Advanced Studies at the Communication University of China. She is also an online figure that has some popularity. In an interview with Niti's Entertainment, she revealed that Wu lured young women into sexual relations on the pretext of signing artists and choosing MV actresses. The first time she met with Wu, she was made drunk and had her phone taken from her. The victims, including herself, numbered far more than eight, including even two minors. Since then, more than 20 women have made the similar online accusation against Wu. Some are underage girls. Chinese media reported that an online writer on her behalf wrote the girl's social media posts. Her motive for exposing Wu was that she wanted to be treated fairly and that Wu should not be allowed to deceive other girls. At the same time, the girl admitted that she expected to use this incident to raise her online profile. A con artist emerged during the online exchange and pretended to be the girl, Wu's lawyer and Wu staff simultaneously. He played three roles while trying to blackmail both parties, the girl and Wu. Despite the heated online dispute between the girl and Wu, no one went to the police. However, with the con artist joining the chaos, Wu's mother decided to call the police and since then, the Chinese police have been involved in the incident. The arrest of Wu has sparked a social media storm in China. Some netizens sent out screenshots of chat, breaking the news that Wu was arrested for having sex with a fan who was less than 14 years old. There were also claims that all of Wu's previous electronic records were recovered, so presumably evidence could be found. There are also videos from the hotel that clearly show that the girl was brought into the room in a state of unconsciousness. There are even videos of Wu's team secretly filming at the hotel, and these recordings may not even be known to Wu himself. Another netizen revealed that Wu was a gang member and several performers were involved in the case. Before the Beijing police issued the arrest notice, Wu had already been labeled a degenerate artist by major Chinese official media and was heavily criticized. Subsequently, more than a dozen brands, including French luxury brand Louis Vuitton, German automaker Porsche, French cosmetics brand Lacombe, 
Chinese instant noodle brand Master Kong and Chinese video streaming giant Tencent Video suspended or cancelled their contracts with Wu. It seems the Chinese police and official media have played the role of messengers of justice in this case. However, if you are familiar with the Chinese entertainment industry, you will know that China has as many entertainers of poor character as corrupt officials. Who is arrested and who is criticized by the public opinion depends on the needs of the CCP at the time. The CCP has vigorously promoted the entertainment industry in China since the Tiananmen crackdown 32 years ago that had cut off the road to social improvement in China. By immersing the Chinese public in entertainment and gossip, where the more vulgar the gossip, the more publicity they garner, as if offering the Chinese people a pacifier of pleasure, the CCP has found a route all the more conducive to the so-called social stability. The boom in China's entertainment industry has also given rise to an interlinked commercial chain. Devoted, even feverish female fans have formed fan groups. They collectively sign in, repost, and comment daily, thus bolstering the commercial value of these online stars. Chinese celebrities are also keen on buying fans and reposting through bots to generate fake data and traffic. On China's Sino Weibo, Super Talk, where celebrities compete for popularity, there are many fans of various celebrities. Traffic ranking becomes the dominant rule, supporting a vast economic ecosystem that uses traffic data to indicate one's commercial value. According to a 2021 industry report by Beijing-based data service provider InData, the total size of China's idol industry may exceed RMB 130 billion, or US 20.1 billion, in 2020, and fans are mainly women in first and second tier cities, primarily born after 1995. The size of the spin-off industry, including film and television, variety shows, and advertising endorsements, has reached RMB 85.5, or US 13.21 billion. In 2016, Wu was reported by a female fan named Gina to have been cheated out of her feelings and had sexual relationship, and other women started to speak out on the internet about their experiences with Wu as well. The incident sparked much online debate. Many people from the Chinese entertainment industry expressed their support for Wu at the time. A Chinese media producer and host commented, Wu is a living god. Sleeping with fans is the equivalent of a big leader eating at a small restaurant. It is an absolute pro-people move. The matter soon subsided and Gina was attacked and bullied online. Wu's acting and commercial activities were not affected at all. Instead, he flourished in 2017. Wu was ranked among the top 10 of Forbes' China celebrity list with an annual income of RMB 150 million or US 23.18 million. In 2019 and 2020, thereafter, he was ranked among the top 10 of Forbes' China celebrity list. The Chinese media analyzed the financial backing behind Wu and found that the company that helped him survive the scandal was called Sparkle Roll Media, through which Wu was also promoted by Jackie Chan, a leading figure in the Hong Kong entertainment industry. In 2019, Hong Kongers were cracked down on by the Hong Kong police during the pro-democracy movement. Wu, as a Canadian, reposted a post from the People's Daily on Weibo expressing his attitude, I also support the Hong Kong police. Before the breaking scandal of the girl, Wu had acted in nearly 10 movies, seven of which were leading roles. Although Wu was considered to have almost no acting skills by the performing industry, it did not prevent him from becoming a guest lecturer in some Chinese film and television academies. However, since 2018, the financial backing behind Wu started to have problems, with the shareholders of the company he is affiliated with being listed as untrustworthy executors by several Chinese courts, having their high consumption restricted and their shares frozen. 
In other words, Wu's vast network of capital connections has basically fallen apart. As the former financial sponsors fell apart, Wu was mainly supported by his top-tier online traffic and the brand capital that relied on it. Yet, this type of capital is not safe in China and is even vulnerable. After Beijing police issued a notice of criminal detention for Wu on July 31, the online Wu rescue group discussed a so-called plan for a prison break. Some fans suggested that Wu's Weibo account had 51.6 million followers, while there were only 2.2 million police officers on the mainland. If fans united for a break in rescue, each police officer would have to face an attack of 23.5 fans. Even if 2.3 million people from the People's Liberation Army were included, there were only 4.5 million people in total, so if fans united, they could break into the Beijing Detention Center and rescue Wu. Soon after, Weibo shut down Wu's base camp, including 108 super talkers, 789 groups, and permanently shut down 982 accounts. As Wu was losing the powerful capital backing, this scandal may have come at a time that is all too important to the CCP. In China, when there is an influential public outcry against the government or the party, the official media will choose to release an explosive news story from the entertainment industry. This tactic works very well in shifting the public's attention. Now, how would the CCP divert the public's attention away from the flood tragedy in Henan province, which has attracted widespread attention in and out of China? The scandal of a high-profile Chris Wu comes just in time, not to mention the fact that he has Canadian citizenship. Many Chinese people are unable to distinguish between China and the Chinese Communist Party because the CCP's prolonged brainwashing propaganda. Pitting foreigners against the Chinese is another effective way to incite patriotic emotions among the Chinese people. The CCP Central Committee of Political and Legal Affairs issued a statement that Wu had been detained on suspicion of rape and that, on Chinese soil, one must abide by Chinese laws. The People's Daily commented that foreign citizenship is not a protective shield and there is no immunity even if you are a celebrity. The China Women's Daily, on the other hand, stated, on Chinese soil, no one is above the law. The Sino-Canadian relations are still tense. In December 2018, Canada detained Meng Wenzhou, daughter of Huawei founder Ren Zhengfei and Huawei's financial director, in response to an extradition request from the U.S. Department of Justice. Days later, Chinese Communist authorities arrested Canadian citizens Michael Korvig and Michael Spaver and have detained them since. In a statement released Sunday, Global Affairs Canada said that the government had been informed of the media reports and that consular officials are liaising with local authorities to gather more information. In addition, the People's Daily Overseas Editions account, Shai Kidao, commented on Wu's criminal detention. Some online celebrities make money easily because the entertainment industry has a lot of hot money capital concentrated in recent years. It is also because it is too easy to make money that some celebrities are oblivious and flout the law. The message is worth paying attention to as it means that Wu's case is not over yet, and perhaps the Chinese government is looking for more loaded celebrities like Wu. As we have analyzed in previous videos, the Chinese government has lately been very tight with its finances. Harvesting from the entertainment industry is another way to get money.